the other big trend in capital flows is ESG investing. Yeah. And I've heard you say before, there are trade-offs yeah. between ESG portfolio constraints and ESG portfolio returns. Sure. Do you think investors understand those? Um, many do, many don't. Um, we pride ourselves uh, uh, on this uh, investor education. Uh, 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 on, on, and this sounds highfalutin, but doing, saying the honest thing, even when it's not the best sales pitch. Um, I've written uh, things trying to explain this, um, and it, it's 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 a little much, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a shot now. The simplest form of, of, of ESG, there can be much more sophisticated, there could be activist forms. The simplest form is a restricted list. You're not allowed to buy the bad companies. There are quite a number of people who tell investors, you do this and you'll do even better. First of all, if you mean that as a trade, that you just think for the next few years ESG will be popular, that's totally legitimate. It's not our style to mm -hmm. make those bets. Um, and also I like to, the cynic in me likes to point out that the bad people who don't give a darn about the cause would do the same thing if they believe that. That's not virtue, that's a trade. But if you're doing it for virtuous reasons, that it, it, which is wonderful, we're all in on managing ESG. If you want your portfolio to reflect what you believe in, that's awesome. But to tell people the following, we're going to take our universe, cut it down, and by cutting down our own universe, do even better for you on average over the long term, that's just bad math. Um, a smaller universe means there are some things um, that, that, that the opportunities you can't pursue. Not that you'll get everyone right, but it has to be. It's less net. diverse. Um, but what I really love pointing out, and this actually does make some ESG investors feel pretty good about it, is imagine I'm right and you're giving up a small amount of expected return to reflect your values. That is how you affect the world. I've asked people, how do you affect the world through ESG investing? Well, if I don't invest in this, no, but how does it actually matter? If you believe these companies are doing bad things who you've restricted, you want them to do fewer of those bad things. You, by you not investing in it, and you has to be a fair number of people, other people have to own more of it. The, the bad people who don't care, and don't have your values, have to own more of those companies. They have to be induced to own more. That's more than they want to through a higher expected return. A high, an expected return is a discount rate. When that company looks at a future project, looks like every MBA student, third day of class, puts cash flows into, for me it was Lotus 1, 2, 3, but um, puts cash flows into a spreadsheet and discounts them at some discount rate to say, should I, is it a positive NPV project? If that discount rate is higher, fewer projects will be positive Cost NPV. Of they have higher. to own, earn more. That is literally how you affect the world, is by raising the cost of capital. That sounds like a negative, but the downside is one man's cost of capital is another's expected return. Um, so I do tell people, I don't expect this to be a very big give up at all, because um, stocks are close substitutes. I, I don't think uh, you know, you're going to move the market that dramatically, uh, but I think it is a small constraint that reflects your values, and if it's any give up at all, it's your contribution to making the change you're seeking.